Hello, I'm Rick Guzman from the Cigar Night Podcast, and today I'm joined by my friend Seth Guerrero, and we're going to be doing a beginner video for how to smoke tobacco pipe. So let's get to it. The first question uh, that I think a lot of people have is, what's the difference between smoking tobacco from a pipe uh -huh. uh, instead of smoking just a regular cigar? Um, well, first off, uh, there's some obvious differences. Um, with a pipe, you can get a, you know, the draw is different. With a, with a cigar, it's pretty standard almost all the time. It's always straight. It's always horizontal. With pipe tobacco, there's a different kind of variety, just as much variety, maybe more. And it's a different kind of variety. There's aromatics, English, and uh, Cavendish types of tobacco. Um, and then, obviously, the shapes of the pipe differ. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, there's, like, um, this, like, curved kind of thing. And there's official names for this for people more intelligent and more educated about this than I am. <laughs> right. But there's, you know, there's this curved uh, kind of thing. And then there's the big Gandalf pipes. And mm. then there's the straight corn, corn cob pipes and stuff like that. Um, so, those are some basic differences. And then, even then... Um, <laughs> down to the, the functional differences it's like uh, a cigar you can puff a few times and let sit for five minutes right and then go back to puffing with a a pipe you know you have to nurse it a little bit more frequently it's a little more involved i would say mm -hmm. um but at the end of the day they're both similar in that you smoke both for taste and you look cooler smoking a pipe absolutely yeah, that's the best and most important part yeah. is looking cool. Yeah. So I know from seeing you, because you smoke pipe, uh, uh -huh. I normally stick with regular cigars. There's a little more work to a pipe yeah. than just a cigar. You light it, you puff it, you smoke it. With uh, the pipe, there's actually more work. Like you said, you have to keep it lit yep. uh, while you're smoking it. Uh, so what's that process like for someone who's never smoked pipe? Right. You know, what, what do you start with? Um, so the first thing to do is secure yourself a pipe. Uh, mine was a gift from my brother. Um, okay. From what I understand, and I'm I'm more of an advanced beginner myself. Sure. I'm not a super veteran, but right. I mean, I'm mo I'm more familiar than an immediate novice. From what I understand, the like size and shape of the pipe is like purely up to you. Right. Um, it's kind of like. I don't know, like a cowboy hat, I guess, in that in that circumstance. Sure. Like there, there are like, like rules and stuff. Like right. you know, wear felt in winter, or like use a curved pipe in this situation, or use a straight one in this one. But really, it's all personal preference. So uh, one thing I've noticed a lot is a lot of people say to stay away from uh, like the corn cob uh, pipes. Right. Yeah, I mean they, they tend to be, from what I understand, they tend to be of the cheaper variety. Right. If you're if you're starting. I don't see why you wouldn't go for a cheap one, mm -hmm. just so you can mess up with the cheap right, one, um, right? And do all the do all the damage on the cheap one, and then once once you learn the basics, such as you know, hopefully stuff we'll be covering in this video, like then you can move on to the the more advanced, advanced. Things. That's, right. that's probably you know experienced pipe smokers who are like, there's no such thing as a good corn cob, or whatever. right? Because I mean, you always see them in the buckets, right? At the at you know smoke shops, and then they're big old buckets, and it's like right one for 20 bucks sure all right well let's zoom in and let's get started with this pipe all right you just got your your new pipe in the mail or whatever you just got it from the shop um and you want to start smoking straight away you're you're probably gonna have some some basic tools to start off your pipe uh a pipe tool of some sort um and it, you really don't have to buy anything fancy a lot of pipes from what i understand come with tools or you can buy them relatively cheap at uh, whatever smoke shop or whatever, wherever you're purchasing your pipe. Um, it usually has a tamper, a scoop, and a little rod on pipe tool. And some matches. And of course, your tobacco, right? Uh, first things first is you wanna pack your pipe um, with relatively moist tobacco, not sopping wet and not brittle either, kind of similar to cigars in that way. Um, of course, you can touch this tobacco, right? So, and you can feel the humidity inside. As long as you keep it in sealed jars, it should be fine. Um, packing the pipe is, again, uh, up to personal preference. There are different ways to do it, but one way that I started doing it, and one way that I usually continue to do it, is the three-layer method of three pinches of tobacco into the pipe, and the bottom layer is the loosest, and the top layer is the, the tightest pack, right? Um, so the, the first pinch you want to get is uh, 
you don't want to squeeze it too hard you want to make sure it's still fluffy and you just kind of want to drop it in into the pipe and kind of like massage it in there right get 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 the first you, i usually fill it up to the the halfway mark of the bowl i don't know if you can see it there i usually fill it up to the halfway mark and that's my first layer and i, I keep it very 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 loose right second layer second pinch um again i usually just pinch very loosely and i massage it in there and i fill it up all the way to the brim for my second layer and then i just push it down i push it down i usually use my finger but i'll use the tool for this so hopefully you can see it a little bit better i use the tamper you usually push it down and you don't push it down all the way until there's no resistance you just push it down back to the halfway line right back to the to where you stopped on the first layer right and that's that's usually a good a good tight a good a good tightly packed second layer not too tight but just tight enough so you have room for the third layer third layer another loose pinch massage that tobacco in there all the way up i usually go a little bit over the top just a little bit and this one feel free to pack pretty aggressively this will be your tight tightest packed layer and if you did it right you know then you'll probably be at the three-quarter mark right there should be a, a little bit of a lip on the inside of your bowl here right on the inside of your bowl in general i prefer to use matches i feel like there's a lot more control when you light the match it's a it's a flame that's naturally inclined to go up right so all you really need to do you don't even need to like point it down there or anything if you get a good light all you need to do is hover that that flame the, and the bottom of the flame of the match will light the very very tippy top of the layer and it'll burn the tobacco kind of like a dynamite fuse where as as you puff it'll it'll slowly ignite strands of tobacco all the way down until you're done with the bowl you light the match you put the the straw in your mouth and you suck that flame down and you got your bowl lit Give it a few puffs. Get a good cherry going. Don't burn your tongue. All right, second part is uh, pipe anatomy, and 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 let's let's do some cleaning as well. Um, so in a lot of pipes, not all pipes, but in in, in a lot of pipes, uh, you'll have a a, a two-piece pipe. Uh, but all you really need to know. Um, is that uh, you can pull your pipe apart and this this part is generally called the straw and this part is generally referred to as the bowl there's you know micro parts and and, and you know names for all of the the, the further intricacies but uh, for clean that's pretty much all you gotta know um, so to start cleaning uh, you're gonna want to pull your pipe apart um, to prepare for cleaning generally when I clean I try to, to pull my pipe apart and do a, a wipe down first, a preliminary wipe down, um, just to get all the uh, the ash and the and the grease or whatever you see that ash and the grease and or oils and stuff. Um, and don't go too heavy in the bowl because that's going to be full of ash, of course. Uh, but you see, I got I got all kinds of black around that rim there. I'll wipe that off uh, before I start. Uh, once you're done wiping down, um, generally my first step is to prep the bowl for cleaning. Um, you want to get all what's referred to as cake. Usually that's tobacco that stays on the inside of the bowl and kind of, kind of co not coagulates, but kind of, I mean, I guess cakes up on, on the walls and on the bottom. And, you know, occasionally when you dump ash or whatever, um, you might have some leftover tobacco strands in there anyway uh, so you're going to want to get not a, not a sharp bit but you, I usually use the end of my scoop here on this pipe tool and I usually just kind of mildly scrape the inside of the uh, of the bowl right and I'll, I'll try to get down there a little bit and I don't go too hard you know especially with pipes that have like a kind of like a vinyl or like a wax inner coating if you bought it new you know those those will kind of wear away in time and you don't want to go out of your way to like 
scrape into into the wall of of the uh, the bowl, right? You just want to get that cake out from under there, and you'll see it. You can see it on the scoop, and you can dump it here in the ashtray. And once I'm done doing that, I'll wipe down my tool, and we can move on to using the pipe cleaner, right? Pipe cleaners aren't just for arts and crafts. They're actually used for cleaning pipes. Uh, generally, there's there's two kinds, uh, from what I understand. There's the like the generic soft kind that you might find at a craft store, and they sell them at, at smoke shops as well. And then there's um, like barbed kind. They have like they have like these little bristles. They're bristled uh, pipe cleaners, and they're they're rougher. They're they're not sharp, but you know you can feel little little prongs sticking out of them. Um, and especially if you haven't cleaned your pipe in a while, if you feel like you might run into any any solids in there, you know, then uh, you might want to get you some some bristled pipe cleaners and some soft ones if you're just trying to get rid of the uh, the the black goop. Um, you, I, I start. It doesn't really matter which one you start with. I usually start with the bowl. Um, I usually try to clear the airways first, um, so you stick in from the straw end. Um, massage you don't want to bend the pipe cleaner inside otherwise you got to trash it and start over so just kind of massage until you find the hole of the bowl and once you find the hole you can just kind of push the pipe cleaner through as far as it'll go in and just kind of spin it around do a couple of back and forths um, really it's just about clearing that air away right you're not going to get it squeaky 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 clean you know and you can dump anything that's come out switch sides find the hole massage it through and that's the bowl same thing with the straw um in general i think it's easier to start from the mouthpiece because it's a much smaller hole uh, to navigate if you try to push through where it connects to the bowl then you're gonna have to try to push it out through that little tiny um, blowhole right there and that's very difficult so I usually like starting from here and that'll about you do you for the uh, the pipe cleaning and after that all you got to do is get some uh, some cleaning cure here um, whatever sort of treatment you got um, and then you you pour just a little bit into the bowl swash it around there try not to get it on the outside a lot of these do have alcohol in them so it could ruin the finish make sure it coats the inside of the wall and then drain the rest out uh, through the straw bit and then I'll usually put the straw back on and do another bit pour it in there make sure it gets around on the wall and then again out the straw and make sure it, it it's able to drip out the last drops from the straw and after that place it upside down in the place where it can dry let it dry for 24 hours and it should be good to go might want to give it a wipe down and, uh, and you can start smoking again.